Hello, I'm Karen and welcome to part three. This is where we're going to be adding on our sleeves to our cardigan and um, I don't know why, I always start off with this sleeve. And if you want to start off on the other sleeve, it doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter, you're still going to start off in the same space. Okay, so I'm going to get my yarn, make my magic loop, it's not a magic loop, my slip knot, sorry. And what I'm going to do is, is if we're underneath the arm, we've got one loop left over. Now I know this is going to make it look like a huge hole and whatnot. You slip stitch on, you chain one, and then you half double crochet in the same space. Okay, don't worry because this bit settles down afterwards. Now we want to half double crochet in the post of the stitch that we've got from there then we've actually got the corner area so we're going to put a stitch in there and then this is the point where we look at our work and when we look at our work here because we've um, done an odd amount of rows we've actually got the little ridge thing that turns on about here you'll see is one space away from where you're working so to keep the pattern going we need to just work normally underneath these loops as we go around. Now when you go around and you count all of your stitches um, you'll end up with 32 stitches on this particular sized cardigan and on different sized cardigans you're going to end up with different amounts of stitches so this is where as long as you go in the same stitches all of the time you still don't actually need to count anything because they will work out exactly the same. It's when you start changing where you join together um, where you'll change the amount of stitches. But as long as you do each sleeve exactly the same in exactly the same places, then they'll be the same. And this is what I said is this cardigan is so lovely and so easy. Um, and I'm proving to you all the time while I'm working at it that I'm chattering away and you don't actually need to count. The only counting we did was the very beginning chain. Then we counted how many rows we made until we actually made our sleeve holes. And then we counted the amount of rows until we did the border. And the border is always two rows round, unless of course you wanted to add on an extra frill at the bottom, which you can do if you like. So, um, <laughs> it is, I think this is, it is, it's just the easiest thing that you can make when you, it, yeah, it's, um, I don't know, when you first start crocheting, you think, to make a cardigan seems such a huge, challenging thing, but it's actually not. So now when we come down here, um, the way that the work has fallen, we've got, we've done our stitch there, and this is actually the corner, so we remember we, to, we did a stitch in the corner on the opposite side. And also we did a stitch into the chain, um, into the half double crochet post. So we need to put a stitch in that post. Now this is where, um, when we actually join together, we're going to join together in the top of the first half double crochet. And this is where I'm going to show you a different way of crocheting two stitches together because we're going to reduce. Every time we do a, each row round, we're going to do the same sequence here, which will cause us a nice join. So what we want to do is we want to chain one, we want to wrap the yarn over and go into that same space where we just did the slip stitch, as if we're going to create a half double crochet. So we've got our three strands on the hook, wrap the yarn over and just pull through two. So you're left with two. Now, remember what I was saying about the pattern. We wanted to make the pattern follow on. So instead of going into, um, we're normally going underneath here. What we're going to do is we're going to wrap over our yarn. We're going to come through, what is the, there's a back stitch, but if you have a look, there's actually two stitches at the back. Can we see that? And we go through there, we wrap over, 
we pull through two, we've got three strands of yarn on our hook, we pull through all three, and even though we've got a chain and two stitches there, that is actually now one stitch, okay? And then to keep this pattern, because we want, we want this little ridge to form now, so we're going to keep on working, we're going to go underneath two loops at the back. I'm trying to get at the right angle so you can see where I've got, yeah? You've got, if you look at your work, you've got these stitches at the front, you've got what is normally a back stitch, and there's actually another stitch right at the back. And when we go in there, as you will see, it will form this little line again, the same as the line that you've got over here. <clears throat> so then it makes your cardigan sleeve match on as the actual pattern goes. So it looks like you've gone backwards and forwards, but you're actually going around in a circle. And it is that little tiny trick <clears throat> that um, I realised that when you when I'm trying to write out my work, trying to explain where you're actually going <laughs> is probably the most difficult part of things because you actually need to use a lot of words for something that's actually very simple. Yeah, and we can see we're going to do these back two loops all the way around on this row. And so on alternative rows we will do this so that we create so I've only gone through one. Um so as you're looking at your work, you've got this I say it's just a simplistic pattern, but it makes your sleeves look like they're following on. Whereas before, whenever the, I was looking at other people's work and the way I was doing it, you was the sleeves was always odd. It was different to the rest of the work. Unless, of course, you created a specific pattern and then that's different again. But we're just doing the basic, simple cardigan. This is the easiest way that I could possibly show you. And that hopefully it will stick in your mind. And you'll use this technique. Because I'm going to use this technique when I make the hat. So that when I make the hat, the hat is going to get this seam where it's where you're going to get um, an indent bit where two rows join and then a ridge. Um, and so that we actually have a matching hat and cardigan for this particular one. Um, and say so that after after I've done the cardigan video. Um, I'm not going to do a video for a little while because, like I said, yeah, I've got I've got a um, hospital appointment with my dad, and he may need um, some extra support with his shopping and things afterwards, and me to nip around. Now, when we get here, look, we've still got this. We've got a, this is our join. We don't want to work into there. If you see that, we're not working there. We want to go on. I'm going to slip stitch into that top of that first half double crochet that we did. Okay, so now we're going to do our next round. We're going to do, I've picked up the wrong strand. We're going to do um, the same action again. So we chain one, we half double crochet into the same space that the slip stitch was, what we just did. We half double crochet. A partial half double crochet. I don't know how to describe that. <laughs> now this time we don't want the ridges. So we're going to do the second piece. We're going to go and do half of a half double crochet. So we've got our three strands on. And come through all three. And that creates one stitch. Even though it's looking like three, it's actually only got one piece that you can actually join back onto. And then we're going to go through the normal top two pieces, sorry, that's a little bit of a loose stitch there. We're going to go into these normal top two pieces of our stitch so that this time round we're creating the same, we're creating the indent here yeah, so that it matches. I do hope that I'm making sense with all of this, I say, because I, I was trying to write it out. I must have written it out. 
15 times and I was like oh how do I explain this how do I and I tried doing the sleeves in different ways because so I thought well what about those people that don't want a tapered sleeve what about those people that want the straight sleeve that's where you get the um what was it called what did she what did that lady call it a running a running seam and I'm like so that's where um if you wanted to do it without reducing the sleeves, you wanted to just go, you could just go round and round in a circle. But to, but you still can change over the stitch in exactly the same way that we're doing here. So you, sometimes you do it underneath the top two, top two strands and sometimes you do it through the back two strands. Then you just have to remember that when you're doing that, that your changeover point is just underneath the arm and that removes the um, the joining line so you the pattern doesn't quite match exactly underneath the armpit but that's underneath the arm and it's not noticeable so um, but then I found when I got to the end I was like oh I think it's a bit too baggy so that's where I did a, a row of, um, I did, I did, I did crochet two together and then crocheted just the one. So I'm back to this beginning bit here, which is where I don't use that. I need to find the top of this half, half double crochet stitches that I've joined together there. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same as I did before. I'm going to chain one. Wrap my arm over and do half of a half double crochet <laughs> there. And then into the next stitch, I need to make sure I'm making these ridges again. So I need to go into the back two pieces of the stitch, do half of a half double crochet, and then finish off so that even though it's looking like there's three strands there, there's only one stitch to join onto. And it's, I don't know if we can see already, how it's actually starting to make a sleeve that's a reduced, um, a tapered sleeve. I'm still thinking I actually haven't done enough length on this card here, you know, because I've did it. Um, it looks just, it looks like a shorter one to me, so it may be one of those ones where I change my mind and say, do you know what? Actually, we need to do ten rows down there, or twelve rows, or you know, it's just it, it really. At the end of the day, it's your cardigan in the style that you're making. So it's your choice. It doesn't mean that it's your pattern <laughs> because realistically, the, there's a basic pattern that you can twist and, and say it's like, just because I'm adding an extra frill on it, or just because, I'm sorry, I'm just moving that other tail end out of the way because I'm moving it inside because it's getting on my nerves and keep picking it up um you can't turn around and sell the pattern and say this is my pattern that i wrote because you didn't <laughs> yes you may have done a few little alterations so then therefore you can say oh i've just used karen's pattern and added my own little bit and this is what happened so you know like i did with the um the Russian hat, the, what was, what was that lady's name? Katrina, something or other. Um, I, you know, I was honest and I said, you know, it, is, it, it was technically, it was she was the one that was sharing it, but I don't even think it actually even was her pattern. She was just sharing somebody else's work. And obviously she was doing it in Russian. And all I've done is I've then done it in English, but it doesn't make it be my pattern. It's my translation. Um, and so that's one of those things where I think when I, because some people have been asking me like, like to have that pattern for sale and I'm like, oh, I feel kind of guilty for charging, but then I suppose I'm actually just charging for the for my translation and also she did actually make a mistake in hers so and I corrected that but that that's one of those 
um, situations where I feel a little bit awkward because I don't want to be stealing somebody else's thunder, so to speak. I don't want to say, oh, I've done this and I'm, I'm so cool because I didn't. Somebody else told me about something that they liked. Right, I'm doing, so I'm doing the beginning bit again. So it's chain one, half of the half double crochet in the same space. I don't need the ridge pattern to happen this time. So I'm going under the top two loops, half of the half double crochet, and then go through all three strands. Yeah, so um yeah, as I was saying, as I, I don't want to I don't want to be classed as stealing other people's work. I'm just but then I don't know, somebody could get in touch with me and say, This is my pattern, will you show everybody how to do it? So then I suppose that feels more fair, but I'd still would say, oh, this is bloody blahs pattern. And it's like this one. Um, the idea for this cardigan wasn't my idea. It was somebody else's idea that I worked with um, in the very, very beginning and was making it my own by making alterations because say the idea was there but the actual finished result was um not as neat as you'd want it to be i suppose is the best way to put it so i was doing my version of it and like i said unfortunately the editor said this is cool I'm just going to add on my little frill here and go, ta-da, this is mine. Or I'm just going to take out a couple of chain stitches here and ta-da, this is mine. <laughs> so, um, but that's people for you, I suppose, isn't it? It's, it's, that's where we, we, when we shouldn't, you know, but that's where we actually lose our trust in people because people actually betray our trust. And this is one of those things that, historically has happened for thousands of years you know it's like while i've been doing my research and been looking up all these different things and finding out about all these different people and how did they live and what did they do and um what did they eat <laughs> i'm just i know i'm a bit random but you know it's to me it's actually quite important um because oh, I need to be making the ridge pattern this time round. Concentrate, Karen. Underneath there. And then through all three. Now I can chatter. Um, I forgot even what I was saying. Oh, yeah. About what actually people eat. Because I was actually... Even though I was doing history of, like, finding out who did what, where and when... I noticed that there were some discrepancies with the dates. I also noticed that there was information about people that said um, certain people invented things or discovered particular things. But then I found other people that I'm thinking, hang on a minute, their story is like almost identical. Could they actually be the inventor of that? You know, and it makes you wonder. Um, because, you know, the, these things was happening like hundreds and hundreds of years ago, you know. Dishonesty has been around forever, since the first person learned how to tell a fib. <laughs> um, so, it's one of those things that I suppose you could kind of say it's sort of within us all. We've all, we've all got the opportunity, we can all tell a fib or two. And I'm... I'm I'm guilty. I've told fibs in my lifetime. You know, but I'm, and I've done it so that certain times you just, I don't, that for example, I used to tell my children, um, like fairy stories and things and tell them about Santa Claus and stuff like that. But then I felt like it, it was wrong. I thought, you know, if I make them believe in something that's not the truth, then they're always going to expect something. So, um, but then that got me into trouble 
because my children didn't believe in Santa Claus when they went to school and all the other children did and the teachers and the other parents was devastated when my children was like no there's no such thing as Santa Claus at all you know you've been told a big fib <laughs> so um oh, I don't know sometimes you don't know what to do for the right or for the wrong do you really so but uh Yes, the, the historical things I found out. It's like, for example, we'll use Queen Elizabeth the uh, First. She was the queen in um, the fifteen hundreds, and because she, this is a religious thing as well, actually, because she, um, while she was growing up, she actually believed in the Protestant faith which meant that you just got to believe in Jesus. And Queen Mary um, believed in the Roman Catholic version. And the Roman Catholic version was that they believed in Jesus Christ, but you also had um, Roman Catholic rituals that you'd got to follow. And so because Queen Elizabeth was different, she was locked away in the tower for a year <laughs> as a punishment. Um, but then when she actually became queen herself, she wanted everybody to be a Protest Protestant faith. And so she got all of her soldiers, knights, uh, army, whatever you want to call them, to go around and destroy as much as they could inside churches and things to get rid of the evidence that Roman Catholics was actually a previous religion. So historically we've had naughty royals <laughs> setting as bad examples um, and fighting and arguing and, and then they used to fight over all sorts of stuff and, and but because they were kings and queens that the land was involved, so they used to get married to people in France so they could own a bit of France and marry somebody in Spain so they could own a bit of Spain as well and before you know it they could be the king or queen of, um, here I'll look, just showing you, just having a little pause moment, Let's see how we're going, yeah can see how we're going there, I'm actually thinking that that's actually looking quite big to be fair it's looking like a um i don't know i still think maybe i should have had a bit, a bit of extra length on the bodywork anyway i've done two four six and this one is my seventh row because we actually did an there's an odd row on there so at this point here it, this sleeve hole to me is still too big um as in requirements for the little person that I'm actually making it for okay so this is where and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on I'm going to do another two rows for this sleeve and say this is this is where you can decide as well because you you might want to do like a half sleeve or um just need to keep the pattern going so you need to go underneath there So, uh, yeah, you might say you might want to do like a, a three quarter length sleeve or you might want to do um, like a, a, just a little tiny frill on the edge there and not even have a sleeve so that it's classed as a body warmer or um, I can't remember the other name for it. Me and my mum was on about it the other day um, and we thought it was called a skillet but we, um, then I was like, you know, that might be every name of a frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't sure so uh, I don't know but yes um, historically I think there's lots of things that you just don't know you just they just I don't know why they never taught us these things at school and I don't know why they still haven't taught my children these things at school because they're actually really important of making you see and understand how 
how important religion has been to other people and what I see is that see is, is like to Queen Elizabeth the first in the 1500s it was so important to her that she made sure that the whole of the country became a Protestant religion rather than a Roman Catholic religion she destroyed what is now really valuable artifacts she um she was imprisoned herself so you can understand that she was a you know obviously quite cheesed off and all because the difference was that she wouldn't practice certain you know let's like say the the roman catholics believed in jesus and so did the protestants but it's just because she wouldn't do a particular ritual so um I feel very, very privileged actually to be able to be living in, in an era where it's not forced upon people of following a different sort of religion because at the end of the day, me personally, um, from all the research I've done to do with history and religion, I think that the... Um, the Hindu version is the closest of what I would want to follow if I was going to be religious because that is, you know, be kind to others, um, speak nicely of others, you know, if, if you can't say anything nice then don't say anything, if you, if you can't be friends with a certain person because you both from completely different backgrounds that won't fit then you have to accept that you can't be friends. Or you could be, or you could be friends that say, okay, we agree to disagree on certain things, so you can still be friends. And uh, I think it's probably the way you know, you know like, like now, um, when we've got the wars that's going off in um, Syria, I think there, that's where it's. That's actually very much like our, our ancient ancestors behaving and saying, you know, you should do this because we say so. And they yes, OK, they, they, they believe in their God. But if you look back into actual religion itself, there's like hundreds of different sorts of gods. You know, there, there was the sun god, there was the moon god, there was... There was water spirits that they believed in. There was tree spirits. There was um, the air, the mountains, all sorts of different things. So, and realistically, those those things was probably the better things because those ones were the ones where they actually said, you know, like we we appreciate the tree, we appreciate the plant that gives us our food, um, we appreciate the sun shining today to make our crops grow. Those were the sorts of things that they was um, believing in and why they believed. There, look, how are we doing? Yeah, I think we're looking okay. So I've got two, four, six, eight, and I've done my eight there. So now I need to do, because there was eight, remember we did a row first, and um, we added seven extra rows on. So, but I wanted my pattern to follow on. So now, to make the pattern follow on again, we're going to just do a chain one. Woo! And we're going to do a chain one. I'm not going to reduce anymore, I don't think. I don't know. I could. I could make it even smaller, couldn't I? I will. I'll reduce some more. Let's say this is where you can choose. So I've um, a single crochet in. Oh, if I'm going to single crochet two together, I need to come back out of there. Single crochet two together, I need to go into there catch my yarn into the next space now i want the pattern to follow on so i need to go into the back two loops there so i've got three stitches on my hook come all the way through and that's one stitch yeah so i think um personally in in my eyes uh, i think that lack of communication between countries um Mainly because of different languages as well. Because if you actually trace everything back, 
and go all the way, 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 way back to now then, where was it? We was in Turkey and it's dated somewhere between um, 10,000 and 12,000 years ago. We all actually spoke the same language. And that's been one of the problems that's happened is that as, as a species of human, where, you know, there was a, like, there was, I don't know how many people there were living in that village at that time, but there was, and then people left the village and went and set up village somewhere else. And as they've left, you know, like, so like, so they've left Turkey and some of them have gone to China, some have gone to Russia, some have gone to Europe, some have gone to Egypt some have gone to Mexico um, and so the, and the language evolved and became different languages that then caused problems because um, of being able to understand what each of you was saying and trying to find out who you know what was most important to them at that time so um, even though evolution obviously has been a good thing, it's also been a bad thing. And I also think that maybe, you know, when you're looking at the things, because there's, there's one more other thing that you have to take into consideration, is that um, in... Oh, I know that I can trace it definitely as far back as the Roman times, because they didn't have proper books like we do and didn't have and didn't have a safe to be able to go and put things to be safe and they didn't want um bad people to know their knowledge they actually started writing codes and so when we look at the english that we've got now which is completely different to the english that was spoken even from like the 1400s then um translating all of those things into modern day language i think that mistakes have been made and unfortunately that means that people have been educated the wrong way and i would like to contribute towards changing all of that and making it so that it's all better and so that we all end up back on the same page again of like learning and understanding and appreciating each other and accepting that certain people believe there we go look that's beautiful you can see that I can't, it's really hard to show properly um, how it's looking. But I think, obviously, if you've followed me and you've got your own, um, and then you can see, looking at, if you're following your own work and you're following your patterns and you're following the, these little lines that we've formed, um, to make everything follow on just makes it just look beautiful. So, um now then, it's took another half an hour. We already did one hour and 40. So that's definitely two hours. So we want another half an hour adding on for the other sleeve. So that's two and a half hours to make um, a little newborn cardigan. And this one, actually, I do feel it will actually, looking at it, belly button would be probably about there. So it's only just going to come past the top of the nappy. Um, and I think maybe that you could you could make this a bit longer but like I said is, is that's you the choice you can actually make one you can actually make one that come as long as all the way right down so you could actually put baby's legs inside and you could actually sew across the bottom and make it into like um a sleeping bag with arms <laughs> and add extra buttonholes in it just so you've got something really snuggly for winter that'd be quite cute actually um but yeah so anyway i know i've waffled about all sorts of different things but i said is you know my, my, the history that i've been looking at has made me really see people i mean i have i already saw people in a different light anyway i know that i know that i've always um i've been a very open-minded person been very privileged to have open-minded parents um 
so that I can then I can look from the outside and I can see everything as a whole and I can as I said is, is looking at uh, what they actually did look I've even looked at their clothes I've followed fashions I've followed actually being able to make fabric looking at the skills of like how they was learning how to use wool how um and like making the food and using mills and um different styles of mills to be able to um grind the different corns whether they've used wheat whether they've used barley or or all those sorts of different things and um, I've also done the genetics <laughs> because I'm that obsessed with everything, I suppose. But I wanted to have such an accurate picture to be able to share that um, if somebody else came around and said, oh, but what if this or what if that? And, and I've looked at all those, oh, but what if this or but what if that? And um, I really do believe that if, if I suppose I'm, the best, probably the best thing I could do is actually just write it all up as my little history book and say this is my history book you know like I've done these like this is my crochet pattern this is my this or and have my my little history book so that then you can have a look at from it from my view and then you can see what I've done and where I've come from and then you can have a look at other what other archaeologists have done and other scientists have done and you can see where there's there's, there's a path that a path that people follow in life and how we evolved and how some of us still need to evolve some of us um can't accept that um i don't know how to explain that it's like like sometimes my children say to me mum this that's far too much information for my little brain <laughs> i think other people like that that they sometimes i have so much information it's too much but if i wrote it all down in a book then you could absorb it in little stages and maybe that'd be a nice thing to do um because at the minute i say I, I wanted to i wanted to provide provide my information about ireland and everything to ireland and say ta-da this is what i found out about you how cool is this and now i'm in limbo land and I'm, <laughs> i don't know what to do so and I've got a one-armed cardigan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm going to go and put the other arm on the cardigan and make sure that when I do the other arm, that I, I'm going to, I've got to follow what I've already done. So follow my lines. Make sure that I do the same amount. Um, and hopefully you too will be able to actually make yourself a really, really simplistically easy cardigan that's come out nice and neat. That comes out nice and neat every time. I say, and what I'll do is I'll put some notes in the description box, just some little pointers, because you don't need an actual set pattern for this. And um, I'll make another video. What I'll do is I think I'm going to do this little tiny one. And what I'll do is I'll actually crochet this one up and count the stitches as I go. So that you can actually see, because obviously when I was doing this, you haven't seen my count, you've just seen it's come out right. Um, and I'll count the stitches and, and so that you know that everything everything is right and um, I did the sleeves different on this I did the ridges on every single little bit because I thought that looked kind of cute <laughs> but anyway I do appreciate I really really do appreciate all the time that you take to come you know you take away your time to come and sit with me listen to me and my opinion um, some of you don't you're not going to think the same some of you are going to have a different opinion and, and i do appreciate the fact that you have watched you've liked you've subscribed and that have so many views and, and i do and i'm appreciate it all because it's, it is it's inspiring me it's inspiring my children it's making us have a different life that i never i never thought in my work <laughs> I mean, like I said, when i was at school youtube didn't exist we'd only just started using a computer you know, so for me to grow up and become an adult and to be able to share what I've learned and what my experiences and hope that other people can, even if it just make you think, you know, you don't have to believe the same things that I do, just as long as you think and you, and you, you look at somebody else, you know, and you think, it's so say for example like you came across somebody that was um a, a shoplifter 
yeah they was a shoplifter and that as they was growing up as children their parents were shoplifters so to that child that that was the, just a normal thing to do was to go shoplifting yeah so if as a child you was brought up um jewish then you wouldn't celebrate your birthday you wouldn't celebrate christmas and you've got to look at the way that they was brought up it's not necessarily that they're right or they're wrong you've got to look at the way that they was brought up as a child because it's that child thing that's that makes that difference that if you if you grow up in a, a loving caring environment and you're allowed to look at all the different religions look at all the different countries and say do you know what i actually really like the idea of that i mean it's like me do you know the more and more research you do that the, i mean I, I never ever thought that i'd actually want to like go and spend a long time out of my country and now I feel like I want to go and spend a month or two or even more in Ireland going and seeing all the things that I've learned about. And I would. I would love world peace so that I would actually be able to travel and go to go and see the pyramids that I've seen on the TV and on the internet and to, you know, to be able to go over to Iran and Iraq and to go and see where um where the village was it in 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 the middle of the of the water but that's not there anymore because they've bombed everything and that's such a shame but if they all stopped doing all of that they could actually build a replica which would be cool i would love to go then i mean it doesn't didn't have to be the genuine thing does it if they built a replica of it and said this is what it was like and they told you and you went there and they said oh you know this is how it actually used to look like these are the sort of houses that was there this is how they used to farm this is where they would have kept the cows and the sheep and you know and, and um for them to then teach you what so it would, it would be cool wouldn't it you know to, like to go to every single country and go and like, say egypt you know and say well well you know in 3000 bc this is how they used to live they used to be water here they used to be on a boat they used to sail across this you know it wasn't a desert um and so that you knew and, and you could have that experience everybody should be allowed to do that everybody should be allowed to have that and there should be enough money for everybody to be able to do that and if there wasn't all these things there then it would raise the money wouldn't it you know it's like if you've got the replica of mesopotamia um in um, iran and iraq and they were sharing that there and if you've got the um like the Arabian stories and the camels and, and all the different things that they have there and you know and you, you could have everything that makes a wonderful world to go and visit and and everybody was sharing their thing and saying you know this is how it used to be and this is how we are now and we share back and say well this is how we do things and then you can adopt different things to your countries and you know like sharing solar power and electricity and um all those sorts of things because i mean i've got a head full of it really but so anyway i'm waffling i love you and leave you thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for subscribing bye for now